Hello and welcome to Justin DeWire Artistry. Today we're painting the sky. You're currently looking at a photo that I took near my house a few months ago. In today's video I'm going to do a pastel drawing of this photo and I'm going to show you how to do it. So let's get cracking. I'd tell a cloud joke now, but I'm scared it would go over your head. I'm going to include some captions along the way to help you understand the colours that I've used and also to add a few more hints and tips as we go along through the drawing. I want this tutorial to be as helpful as possible so I want to be able to give you the most amount of information that I can possibly squeeze into 12 minutes. Now I'm going to make the sky up using some bands of colour. I've started with a very pale ultramarine at the very bottom and I'm now overlaying a turquoise colour which is still very light. You'll notice in the sky in the photo that the top of the sky is dark and the bottom of the sky is light. In the bottom of the sky there are actually two bands of colour. There is one at the very bottom which is a little bit more purpley coloured and then one just above it which has more green in it. As we go further up the page we're going to get darker and darker blues with more intensity in the pigment and less white which will make a greater and stronger contrast in the areas at the top of the drawing. A general rule of thumb for any kind of landscape painting is that things that are close to the horizon will be pale and white and not very clear, hard to see. The closer things get to you, the viewer, the more you're going to be able to see clarity and detail and the sharper and clearer things will be. That's a phenomenon called atmospheric perspective and we can use it to our advantage to push things forwards and backwards in our drawing and create a great sense of space. Now you can see me cleaning my hands in the video. It's very important to keep cleaning your hands between colours and even just generally when drawing. I always keep a packet of wet wipes handy and I clean my hands frequently throughout all of my drawings whether I'm using pastel or charcoal or any other medium. I frequently touch the paper with my hands. I do a lot of blending with my fingers as you can see right now. If you never clean your hands and you use your hands to blend, then you will end up inevitably with big oily finger marks on your drawing somewhere. Now I always use a kneadable eraser in my pastel work. It helps me to keep things clean and in particular along the bottom of the paper where I've been blending the blue stuff above it, the pastel dust will have been falling down and sitting on the yellow. I can just clean that all off quickly with an eraser and then come in sharply with my new clean colours without blending the blue into them. One of the key things to a good pastel drawing is keeping your colours sharp and clean and not blending the ones that you don't want to blend together. In this regard it's important to think about how you're going to layer your drawing and putting in the things that you need to put in first so that the things that go over the top and in front can come forwards without becoming a mess. I've drawn in some tree shapes Really, I was just thinking about little broccoli heads. I don't try to draw a little tree exactly, I'm just making little shapes. I've come over the top with a little bit of burnt umber because the green was too green. I didn't have enough brown in it. And I need a little bit more brown. Now I'm going to feed in a little bit more yellow ochre that will open up some of the sections, give me more variation, and will add a little bit more realism. Coming in with some Prussian blue now, and that's going to add some really dark shadows to the trees. It's gonna create a really strong boundary line between the trees and the grass field underneath it and it's also just going to help define this part of the drawing. I've invented a small row of blue hills to put in behind the tree line just to add another layer of depth because I really love to get as much depth as I possibly can into my landscape paintings and drawings. Now I'm just very lightly touching a tiny little bit of that blue above the tree line. It's adding another layer of depth and it's creating a little bit more variation in the tree line. Then just a few simple stripes of orange in the front, a very pale yellow orange, and that just gives me another layer of depth in the front there. The orange and the yellow are warm colours and will come forward, and the orange also complements all the blue that we're putting in this drawing. So now we're moving on to the clouds. I'm taking a very pale blue and I'm drawing in a few basic outlines. I start near the edge, which helps me to get the proportions right, so to speak, of being able to find the placement of some of these clouds. Now I'm not going to draw every cloud in this picture. I don't want to do a portrait of the clouds themselves, but what I want to do is a cloud scene. So I'm going to get an understanding of the shapes of the clouds and the way that they work, but I'm going to come up with a few of my own little variations because I like to have some freedom when I'm drawing this kind of a picture. What sort of clothes do clouds wear? Thunderwear, of course. Now it's not important to fill up the whole sky with clouds. I just want to pick a few basic areas Put them in, now we're going to blend. We're going to make it nice and soft 
This is going to be the back layer of the clouds. We're going to put a few more layers over the top of it. Now I've got a range of greys here. I don't know which one I want to use. I'm going to hold them up to my reference photo and see if I can pick one that's about the right colour that I want. Then I'll just try it on the drawing and see what sort of marks it makes. Often in picking colours for your drawings, there's some trial and error. Sometimes you get exactly what you want the first time, but sometimes it takes a few goes. I've chosen something here that's got a little bit more brown in it and something that's a little bit darker. I want something a bit darker because when I blend it, it's going to fade in and if I start with something that's already the right colour, it will get too light. There's a pattern to how these clouds are sitting. You'll notice the big ones are in front, medium sized in behind that and then little ones are far away. This is something called overlapping. You can use this kind of size to add more depth to your painting. Big things in the front, small things in the back. It makes the small things look further away. Blend things in. I often move a little bit of colour or a little bit of shading into areas where I only want a light touch, just while I've got a dirty finger from blending other areas. This is something I do all the time in my pastel work or in my charcoal work. Now here comes the white. I've taken a titanium white, which is a slightly yellow white, and I'm mapping out some of the brighter, lighter areas of the clouds. I'm not trying to achieve any kind of perfection here, I'm really just looking at shapes, putting a little bit of the, the white on the top, and blending it in, making sure that it stays nice and soft. One of the reasons I chose this reference photograph for this lesson is because it has a whole array of different types of clouds. I don't know what these types of clouds are called, but these are the thin little wispy ones that you can see. I'm just using the side of the pastel, very lightly touching, very gently stroking, almost no contact at all, it's such very light touch. So wherever you see a direction in the reference photo, draw your lines in those directions. I connected my phone to the cloud the other day. I kept getting missed calls. Missed calls? I've lost some of the definition at the top of the sky, so I'm going to put a little bit more of the darker ultramarine in there. I haven't made the sky as dark as the reference photo. I'm not trying to draw this as realistically or as accurately as I possibly can or to showcase my skills. I'm just trying to create a tutorial that will demonstrate these things for you and enable you to actually be able to follow along and do what I'm doing. So if you need to add more darkness to your drawing, just blend some more of the darker ultramarine blue in. While I've got it out, I'm going to use a little bit of it in the very bottom cloud shadows. That's going to push them back a little bit more. It's a cool colour so it will recede and it will make them go further away. It gives me a little bit more depth in my sky. That's a simple rule that you can always follow. Cool colours go back and warm colours go forwards. I start pressing a little bit more firmly now with the white. I'm adding in some more of those white highlighted areas to the clouds on the top. I just keep looking at each different cloud formation. Each cloud is different to the others and each one has its own unique shapes. Clouds really are all about shapes. I know some of you folks are still in winter time where you live and I wanted to make something nice and warm and light and airy for you. I worked on yellow paper to give it more warmth. I'm using a white with a tiny bit of yellow in it to give it more warmth. The grey that I've used has got brown in it which also adds more warmth. Everything except the blue is as warm as possible. Keep marking in the highlights softly over the top of the shadows. It doesn't matter if there's a few rough edges, we'll blend those out as we get there. What's important right now is just to keep looking at the picture as a whole. Have a look at where there's too much blue, have a look at where there's too much white, have a look at where there's too much grey, and just start to fill in some of those little details. As I always say, it's really important for you to step back from your drawing from time to time and have a look. What jumps out at you? Is it the thing you want it to be jumping out at you? Is it the thing you want people to see? If it's not, then you need to find some way to, to make it sit down or come forward. So just remember, more contrast means it comes forward. People will see it better. Less contrast means it will move back in the painting and people will see less of it. I just keep marking in some more of the shapes of these wispy clouds. I lost some of that before when I put the blue back over the top. I'm just using the side of the pastel here and I'm just tapping and then I very gently just blend it by tapping my hand over the top. I believe my foreground is a little bit too bright, so I'm going to just tap it lightly. It's going to blend those colours together a little bit, and it's going to push it back. Every time it loses a bit of clarity, it will move back. I couldn't get quite enough, so now I'm actually just going to roll the yellow ochre along. We're just taking a little bit more of the brightness of that green away. The green was still just too bright, and it's coming forwards too much. Now just a few last minute touch-ups to the shadows. Just add a little bit more contrast, add that little bit more depth to where the clouds are sitting, give people that little bit more to look at. 
I'm just putting in tiny touches. I'm not making any drastic moves here. Just little bits at a time and then get back and have a look. And then just a little bit more blending. And there you have it. That's the finished drawing. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. I hope you got something out of this. I intended this to be specifically a tutorial for beginners to pastel. Now this isn't the only way that you can draw this kind of scene, but this is an easy way that you can get started and to get some basic skies and some basic landscapes going with your pastel set. Don't be afraid to give it a go. I encourage you to reach out to me if you have any questions. You can contact me in the comments below. You can also find more of my work and more of my tutorials on my website justindewire.art or through my social media also linked below. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day and bye bye.